Since Repair Clinic encourages you to perform this procedure safely, a warning icon will appear when you should use caution. Because of the high voltage and high current used by microwave ovens, be aware that repairing this appliance poses a substantial risk for injury or death if precautions are not taken. You should always unplug the microwave before you attempt any disassembly. Since high voltage capacitors used in microwaves may retain a charge even after the microwave has been unplugged, we recommend that only experienced professionals access and replace internal components. To fully disassemble and reassemble the microwave, you will need a T15 tamper-proof Torx bit, a Phillips head screwdriver, a small flathead screwdriver, a putty knife, wire cutters, needle nose pliers, and a new self-tapping sheet metal screw. To replace the turntable motor, first remove the glass tray from the oven cavity and pull the turntable coupler straight up to remove. Now tip the microwave on its right side. Use the wire cutters to cut the retaining tabs, securing the bottom access panel. Fully detach the panel. Now disconnect the power wires from the turntable motor terminals. Use the Phillips head screwdriver to unthread the mounting screw, securing the motor. Rotate the motor counterclockwise to fully detach. Install the new turntable motor by inserting the motor shaft through the hole in the floor of the oven cavity and rotating the motor clockwise. Thread the mounting screw to secure. Connect the wires to the terminals. Reinstall the access panel by inserting the tabs into the slots. Then use the new self-tapping sheet metal screw to secure the opposite side of the panel. Return the microwave to its upright position. Align the turntable coupler on the motor shaft and push down. Reposition the glass tray on the coupler. To access internal components, unthread the six rear screws securing the cover using the T15 tamper-proof Torx bit. Unthread the screw on the right side of the cover as well. Pull the rear sides of the cover out, then lift the cover up and pull back to fully remove to reach components like the fan motor, transformer, and high limit thermostats. With the cover removed, you should release the potentially stored electrical charge in the capacitor to avoid injury. You can do this by placing needle nose pliers with an insulated handle across each set of terminals. If you need to replace the fan motor, 
Use the Phillips head screwdriver to unthread the screws to detach the air inlet guide. Pull the fan blade off the motor shaft. Note the orientation of the fan motor power wires, then detach the wires. Unthread the screw to release the noise filter board from the fan housing. Next, unthread the rear screw securing the fan housing. Depress the upper tabs to release the housing, and you can fully remove it. You can now unthread the two mounting screws to release the old motor from the housing. Install the new fan motor by aligning it in the fan housing, then thread the two mounting screws. Reinstall the housing by inserting the lower tabs into the slots in the rear frame, then snap the upper tabs into place. Thread and tighten the screw. Realign the noise filter board. And thread the screw. Connect the wires to the appropriate terminals on the motor. Align the fan blade on the new motor shaft and push it into position. Realign the air inlet guide and thread the screws to secure. To reach parts behind the control panel, Use the Phillips head screwdriver to unthread the screw securing the panel. Open the door and lift the control panel up to detach. Now note the orientation of the wires connected to the control board then disconnect the wire connectors. If you need to replace the door latch bracket, use the Phillips head screwdriver to unthread the two mounting screws, securing the bracket to the frame. Push the latch bracket assembly down to detach. Note the orientation of the three door switches. Then release the retaining tabs to detach the switches from the old bracket. When installing a new door latch bracket, transfer the latch lever from the old bracket to the new one. Align and snap the door switches into the new bracket.
With the switches secured, insert the bracket tabs into the slots in the frame and lift the bracket up to snap it into place. Rethread the two mounting screws to secure. Reinstall the control panel by connecting the wire connectors to the appropriate terminals on the control board. Making sure the door release lever is positioned under the latch lever, insert the lower tabs of the control panel into the slots in the frame. Then thread the screw to secure the panel. To uninstall the oven door, use the Phillips head screwdriver to unthread the two screws securing the upper door hinge. With the screws unthreaded, open the door and lift the door assembly off the lower hinge. To disassemble the door, Set the door on its front on a towel or blanket. Use the putty knife and the small flathead screwdriver to release the retaining clips securing the inner panel trim. You will need to work your way around the inside edge to fully detach the trim. Next, use the putty knife and small flathead screwdriver to release the retaining tabs on the outer door panel, securing the inner panel. You can now fully separate the inner door panel from the outer panel to reach the upper door hinge and the door latch components. If you're replacing the upper door hinge, position the new hinge on the inner door panel. Then reassemble the door by aligning the panel in the outer panel and snapping it into place. Properly realign the trim and snap the trim into position. Reinstall the door by aligning the bottom of the door on the lower hinge pin. Align the upper hinge on the frame. Then thread the two screws to secure the upper hinge. Reinstall the microwave oven cover by first aligning the top edge, then the sides.
thread and tighten the seven screws to secure. With the appliance fully reassembled, plug the power cord back in and the microwave oven should be ready for use.